Hey guys, so I started this video thinking that it was going to be about comparing these two lenses. First is a vintage Vivitar Series 1 uh, 70 to 210 millimeter f3.5. Taking this and comparing it to the Canon FD 135 millimeter f3.5. Now, what this ended up becoming is a Magic Lantern exploration. What can I do with Magic Lantern? How can I best utilize this really relatively old first generation mirrorless, uh, you know, DSLR camera? And how much can I get out of it? You are watching Concept featuring yours truly. First of all, a huge shout out to my brother from down under, Zeke. Pretty much everything that I've been able to do, I've been following his videos. So I would say go ahead and check out his channel. You'll probably find the link in the description below. But in the meantime, one of the, after I started posting a few videos on some of the other channels, one of the comments that I kept getting was, or, or uh, question was, how did I approach the color grading? Uh, using the raw footage that I have of the MLV app. And let's bring that over to the editing studio and show you how I do it. All right, so what I've done here is I've loaded up MLV app version 1.8, in case you're wondering. So what I'm gonna do now is just go ahead, once you've got the app opened up, um, there's an option here for you to import an MLV file for this MLV file for this session. Uh, let's go back to the baby shower. This is a video that I did earlier. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and so once you import the file, it's loading, loading. There we go. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, there's white balance is a little bit off. Um, I shot this on a uh, 1960s uh, Asahi, Ashahi, I don't know how to pronounce it, Pentax. I think it's the pen, no, it's a Super Tacomar 50 millimeter f1.4 lens. So, one of the things that uh, you'll one of the things that if you want to be able to color grade and color correct, um, what you want to do is uh, from here. I literally go onto this right side. Let me just expand this uh, viewing space, and from here, uh, what I will do is I'll scroll all the way down to this area. It says use camera matrix and tone map. I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to say don't use camera matrix and then from tone mapped I'll just go straight to film bam now it kind of gives it a flatter look and now I feel like I have the opportunity to go ahead and change up or really bring out some of these colors so this is how I do it I simply go into option one is I'll select uh, the vibrance and clarity and saturation I like to play around with this one first so I'll bump up the vibrance, boom, bring out the colors a little bit. And the more vibrant I make it, the more of a hue or a tint I'll notice that this thing actually has. And I'll even bring up, bring up the saturation a little bit. And I'm like, okay, you know what? This thing's got a really warm tint. So I'll take this temperature and I'll bring it down. I'll cool it down a little bit. And part of the, especially with this video, uh, this was a baby shower. And the baby shower was celebrating the fact that it was also going to be a baby boy. And so everybody was requested to wear blue and I figured why not make the tint of the video itself a little bit more blue. And so that's why I actually brought it down a little bit and give it a little bit more bluish tint. And so that's uh, that's basically, I mean, from here is just little tweaks. Um, I can even bring up the vibrance a little bit more, bring out the red and the blue a lot, um, bump up the saturation a little bit and you'll notice it's like it's, it's becoming that much more clear and I'll do um, uh, and, and I'll give you an, uh, like I'll show you before and after so from here we go into now these are a few other features that you have um, one is exposure I don't like to play around with that assuming you've exposed your image right um, I might play around with the contrast a little bit um, and so you know you reduce the contrast you increase the contrast um, and then from here, you can also go down to the dark strength. Essentially, it is what exactly what it says. You can increase the dark strength and the dark areas become darker. Um, and you can increase the range of the darkness. Um, I mean, this one is an optimistic video, happy video. So I figured let, let it be, in fact, a little bit brighter. Um, I mean, I don't want the whites to be blown out. So I bump up the light range a little, the range a little bit, not leave the light strength. I can also lighten up the entire video if I wanted to but at this point i don't think it's necessary from here from highlights i can increase the highlights i can reduce the highlights um just like the thing is 
This is just like playing around with a raw photo file, except it's MLV app. It's not Photoshop, um, but it's essentially the same thing. And then from here, I go to uh, shadows. I can uh, increase, uh, decrease the shadows, increase the shadows and highlights. Now, uh, if you've never played with curves, don't worry about it. Uh, essentially, this is just a little bit more in terms of being able to play around with, you know, the top part has to do with the light area. Uh, the bottom part has to do with the dark area. You play around the contrast and the middle area has to do with the midtones. So again, if it's not your thing, don't worry about it. Um, what I'm showcasing to you is the simple stuff that uh, you should it like essentially like right now, I, like it's pretty much done. Right. And so from here, I can just go ahead, uh, make sure your export settings are uh, set up right. Apple ProRes uh, 422HQ. Um, and then from here, uh, if you want to resize it, you can, um, you can resize it to 4k and then edit, um, and, or you could just keep it 1080p It's all up to you. It really, the answer to whether or not you should go 4k export, although this was shot, this was shot at two and a half K. Um, and so I can export it to 4k, which I did in the original video, but I've got a, like a, a beastly laptop. So I'm able to process that. But even with the beastly laptop, it was a little bit slow for me to work, you know, edit through it. But if you don't have a BC laptop, just stick to 1080p or a BC computer. So that's basically uh, it. Now, if you don't want to use this, let's say you want to use um, uh, your computer to do the color grading. All you want is as flat of a color profile. You can do that. So let me, like, this is the situation right now. So if you want to reset this clip, just go to edit, um, reset, uh, receipt. So actually let me just copy it just so I can showcase to you the difference like the before and after. So, uh, let's see here control. So the hotkey is control alt R. So control alt R boom. This was before and now paste. This is after before after before, after. You get the point. So it's uh, it's relatively easy. Now, the other option that you can do is, uh, so let's say we were to reset this. And uh, from here, what I would do is I say, again, don't use the camera matrix. Um, and then you can go to any one of these, depending on if you've done color grading before, then you can pick like Sony S-Log. It just really flattens out the picture profile. Um, you can go to Alexa, C, Log, C. They're all very similar. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and click on export for this. Let's just go to Sony. Let's see. I wonder, actually, I've never used this. That one, I'll do that one. Um, sRGB, record, BDM, uh, BMD film. So S Log 3, Alexa, Log, C, film, tone mapped, and standard. So let's just go to Sony S Log 3 and just go ahead and export this out right now. Um, and if we were to export, let's uh, let's export to 1080p, uh, Apple ProRes. Actually, no, let's not resize it. Exporting the audio. So whatever size this was recorded in, we'll leave it. No, you know what? 1920 by 1080. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's resize it. And then from here, uh, click OK. And then I'm going to export. You can select where you want this to be exported. So let me just go ahead and select the directory in which it was originally. That wasn't it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, baby shower. Click on that. Let me go ahead and create a new folder. Let's call this folder um, tutorial. Bam. And then save. And voila, it's going to start exporting. Now, what I've done here is I've already loaded up the Premiere project. So if you've got Premiere, uh, go ahead, load it up, pull in your footage open up a new sequence, drag the footage in there. Um, and then what we're going to do is go ahead to your effects area, type in LUM for Lumetri, AKA this is how you can create LUTs, I suppose, um, look up tables, but forget all of that stuff. All I know is that I want to color grade this thing. I don't want it to be all like funky looking like it is over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and select two strip. Now, if you're wondering what it looks like, um, in my experience of playing around with these two strip is the one that doesn't do anything. Assuming I have regular footage. I've never done it, actually done it with this guy. So let's drag this in here. Boom. It didn't do anything. Now, if you want, you can maybe even pick any one of these presets and see how that affects it. Right? So boom, one preset does that control Z 
Here's another preset. It does that. A third preset. Essentially, if you're wondering what all this stuff is, think of it like your Instagram filter. Really. Uh, that's, uh, that, that's, and if you want to just kind of play around with any and all of these, you most definitely can. My skill set and knowledge set in, on color grading within Premiere is this much. <laughs> uh, so outside of that, um, yeah, if you're playing with EOSM, playing with Magic Lantern, do MLV, export, and then have fun with the edit. That's it, guys. Um, I hope this was helpful, and um, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe, like, and share with your friends, and I'll see you soon.